goat in my city, there ain't enough for no debate I had to level up, no more crumbs on the plate Started with an A, re-rocked up the shake Four zips is on the flip, that to a plate I seen a hundred K, that was like an 08 Really before that, but you boys peeped the play Jumped off the punch, you ran in 17 Summer did circles round niggas And not one phone To the Thought Hat Studio Fortis Plaza It's a very historic part of a pop up here for many, many years Um... 995 West Orange Blossom Trail, um, right down from the 429. Actually, my, my pops owned this before I did, you know what I'm saying? Y'all can get some on that real quick. My pops owned this, um, and for, for, for many years, you know, he was trying to get me to buy it from him, you know what I mean? Trying to get me to, you know, a long time. And I always turn it down, turn it down, because I really wasn't interested in it, you know what I mean? I was so focused on music going hard music, dumping on my money to music. You know what I'm saying? He's seen that, but you know, he's seen so much in me too. He's like, man, you know, I don't really, you know, want the salon. You know, I kind of just really got it just to, you know what I'm saying, have it. But he really didn't want it, you know what I mean? And he said he could see me doing so much more with it than what he could, you know what I mean? And instead of brushing my brushing my, then one day, man, you know what I mean? I, I, I come up like pop. You know, that, that office stood on the table, you know what I mean? He's like, of course it is. So, you know, we sat down and talked, and fast forward, this is what you see, you know what I mean? Went ahead and totally renovated it, you know what I mean? Real side note, you know, because a lot of rumors, you know, Pops gave me the shop. And if he did, you know what I mean, that wouldn't have been a problem because what black people don't understand that the reason you should always want to own something so you can give it away to your, you know what I'm saying, to your kids, to your grandkids. <clears throat> um, most black people don't leave an inheritance. They leave a debt, you know what I'm saying? So when we see that type of stuff, oh, such and such was given this by his parents, or he was given this, that should, you should want to clap for them. That should be, you know what I'm saying, that's a goal. Um, you should want to leave something, you know what I'm saying, instead of leaving your kids in debt. But that didn't happen, you know what I'm saying, he didn't, you know what I'm saying, I had to buy but of course I didn't have to buy for the price that he would sell to anybody else so you know what I'm saying but I still had to buy it. and you know he was just showing me business you know what I'm saying I had to buy it. and he would just still teach me business at the same time you know what I'm saying this is how I'm doing. so fast forward you know what I mean this is where we at you know after I got it from him I dumped a whole bunch of more money into it he told totally the renovated snapped the floor so I changed everything name all of that, you know what I mean? This is what you're looking at today, you know what I mean? You're looking at Pillar Talk Hat Studio. The, um, the name came to me like so easy, too, you know what I mean? The name came to me so easy when I first got it. That name just popped into my head. I'm like, damn, why did, that, why did that name come to me so easy? And even after brainstorming about two weeks about it, like, you know, call a couple people, hey, man, I got a new salon. You got, you got some ideas, you know, send them to me. And I brain, why, brain, I mean, brainstorm, brainstorm, brainstorm. Other names come up, but. I kept going back to Pillar Talk Hat Studio. Pillar Talk, I'm like, dang, why did I choose that? So, you know, I guess it go with the theme of like, what you doing, you going to, to, to a salon, you know what I mean? You gossip, you talk, you know what I mean? And I just came up with that. I combined that, like, you know, we put, you, you Pillar Talking, you know what I mean? You going to a salon and you Pillar Talk, and it's a double entendre, you know what I mean? I came with a, with a Pillar Talk theme, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, a pillow theme. So when I show y'all the inside, got pillows, you know, and all the pillows, got, you know, got a sand on them, you know what I mean? So it's like the pillows talking to you, it's a relaxing experience, and you get a pillow talk, you know what I mean, all the way. This, this actually, this actually is a, is a is family history, barbering. Um, my granddad, you know, he was a very iconic barber from the city, you know what I mean? One of the first black entrepreneurs, actually, um, my granddaddy, Ezekiah Senior, uh, one of the first black entrepreneurs um, in South of Papa, uh, opened up one of the first barbershops too. So, uh, cut hair been in my family for a very long time, you know what I mean? My dad uh, cut my hair my whole entire life. Um, hope you don't see this, but um, I always felt like once I got of age and started seeing like other people come like that, my dad be fucking my shit up, you know what I mean? So, uh, between 10th and 11th grade that summer, I said, man, I'm gonna learn how to cut hair. So, you know, it's the summertime, nobody ain't gonna see me. I spent the whole summer, you know what I'm saying, learning how to cut my own hair, you know what I mean? Edging it, doing, doing, doing everything, you know what I mean? 
even learn how to use the blade, uh, the razor blade. So by the time I came out of school, seeing yeah, I was I was cutting my, you know I was cutting my own hand and stuff. So and I've been doing that my entire life. Now, um, you won't believe, man. Just recently, twenty. What we in nineteen? What we in twenty twenty nineteen twenty? I just got my half cut on ends up by another person, and I've been doing that for. I've been doing that since I was sixteen. You know what I'm saying? I finally like let another person, you know what I mean, edge me up, and he happened to be working in my salon, man. So that was real. That was real. I cut it for me. You know what I'm saying? People let that happen. You know what I mean? Cause. I never, I never done that. I, I, I never knew what it was like to go inside a, a, a salon and sit there, you know what I mean, and get an edge up or get my hair cut because my dad always did it, you know what I'm saying? So for me to be doing that and be actually sitting in the salon that I actually own, you know what I'm saying, and get my hair cut and edge up, that felt wonderful, man. So cool piece of history right there for y'all. I'll tell you, I heard about my granddaddy, man, a very iconic. Uh, person in the city, man. This is what his barber shop was. Uh, 8th Street. 8th Street and what? Um, Park, I, I want to say. Hope I ain't wrong. I want to say 8th Street and Park Avenue. Um, in between Park and Central. Um, this was, I want to say, 1942, man. Um, one of the first black entrepreneurs, you know what I'm saying, in the city, south of Parker, Florida. Happened to be my grandfather, man, Hezekiah Bradford. Uh, may he rest in peace. But cutting hair always been, you know, big in our family. Like I said, my granddaddy did it. All my uncles cut hair, my dad cut hair. I could actually cut hair too. Very great, you know what I'm saying? Never went to school. He had a lot of clients. Came from everywhere. He had from a lot of them Miami, um, Chicago, New York, you know what I mean? They would come through and pick oranges and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like by the bus loads and get off the bus and come to the barber shop. Barber, uh, Back then, how cuts be like 25 cent, 50 cent, you know what I'm saying? And he built up a lot of clientele. And when he passed, you know what I mean? They say people from all over, you know what I'm saying, came. Um, they just tore it down probably like five years ago, you know what I mean? And been a part of my family history, you know what I'm saying? Part of a pocket history. I know when, like, when y'all see these type of documentaries, it sound way more easy than it is. Let me tell y'all, man, when I first bought that salon for my pops, um, a lot of stuff people didn't know. Like I said, I never went to school for none of that stuff. I had to be, I, I had to get online and learn everything, man. I, I was taking classes online, you know what I'm saying? People ain't know about it. I was going out to schools, you know what I'm saying? Um, putting on the suit, going out to Paul Mitchell's and the Barbershop Academies, you know what I'm saying? Sitting down with owners and all that, like on my own time, you know what I'm saying? Just picking up stuff, picking up jewels, learning everything on my own. And, um, I went through every emotion, man. I went through every emotion. During that time, when I first got the salon, I knew what color I wanted. I knew the uh, color scheme. I knew the themes. You know what I'm saying? I know the flow patterns I want. You know what I'm saying? So I wrote out all that. I had a blueprint. I had a vision for it. You know what I mean? I told people about it. It was like, oh, whatever, nigga, you rap. I'm like, all right, whatever. When it came to fruition, I was like, dang. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to tell people, man, when you become an entrepreneur, when you into business, you know what I'm saying? Because I've been in the business for a long time. You're going to lose a lot of friends, man, because your vision not going to line up to the activities that your friends doing and what you're doing. Y'all going y'all gonna to start building a wall of distance between one another, but it's okay because you just got to stay focused. Every month, it was a different emotion. I was happy. The next month, man, I'm going to sell it. I'm going to quit. You know what I mean? I had to tear the flows up. I redid everything. You know what I'm saying? I probably spent my last what I had saved up and dump it all into it, but, you know what I'm saying, two years later, you know what I'm saying, we still standing, so it makes a difference. So, man, anybody with a, with a dream, anybody with uh, a vision, it's very imperative that you only share that with certain people, you know what I'm saying, and they got to be people that have a vision too, you know what I mean, because there going to be some days where you're going to be like, man, fuck this shit, you're going to want to give up, you know what I mean, you're going to throw the towel in, and if you told the right people about your vision, they're going to be the same people that going to come and pick you up, you know what I'm saying, when you're down. And if you tell the wrong people, when you tell people like, man, you finna quit, they're gonna be like, yeah, man, I told you, but leave that shit alone. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna make you really quit. You know what I mean? So be mindful, be careful about who you tell that stuff to. But I'm a soldier, I'm a warrior, man. We we, we, we coming up on two years, a uh, 100, 100 more to go. Looking for a new lo no, new location soon. And man, we hustling. You know what I mean? That's what it is. 
y'all looking at one y'all looking at one the best man and i ain't just saying it because you know, just i'm saying it because i'm gonna survive you know what i mean i i know what it takes you just gotta know how to stay down until you come up you know what i'm saying like you know the salon the barber shop i went and got me a little rose gold piece king mitch made it for me so it's a barber blade and put vegans in it Man, little something, just a little talking to let you know. You know what I mean? I did something good, so when it got a little pendant, you know what I mean? It's it's special to me. You know what I mean? It's something I probably keep for a long time, never get away. Pass on to one of my kids or something. It's real easy to get sidetracked. You know what I'm saying? It's real easy to get sidetracked when you um when you work for yourself. You build something for yourself because you got to create your own structure. That's why it's so easy for people to get up and go to a job every single day because. They know they got to be there at 8 o'clock. They know they get off at 5 or 6 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? They know they get a break at a certain time. That's easy to fit into that. Um, when you got to wake yourself up, when you got to tell yourself you got to do this, when you got to tell yourself you got to meet this deadline, you your boss, you 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 your manager, you know what I'm saying? You everything. It's easy for you like not to hit them quotas. You know what I'm saying? Cause you're like, ah, it's my shit. I can do what I feel like. Oh, it's my shit. I can put off to tomorrow. And that's when a lot of procrastination come into play. So when I say you got to stay focused, when you become a businessman or entrepreneur, uh, you got to set up your own structure. And if you don't set it up correctly, you will end up putting stuff off that you need to do today for tomorrow. Tomorrow turn into next week. Next week turn into next week. for the motherfucking city, nigga. Stand up.